It's very tempting to see something successful and try and jump on the bandwagon and copy it to get some of that success for yourself, which is why I'll be filming the rest of this introduction as a TikTok. Usually though, those doing the copying try to change it a bit, or at least change it enough so that no one notices. But not these video game ripoffs, which took popular games and then copied them so blatantly that we can't believe they got made in the first place. Here are seven of the worst examples. Enjoy! This season... The most amazing secret of the Middle Ages... will be... Unearthed. In the world of movie making, a mockbuster is a film designed to capitalize on the success of another bigger movie with a similar subject and title. Take, for example, Pacific Rim versus Atlantic Rim, World War Z versus Apocalypse Z, and, personal fave, Kung Fu Panda versus Chopkick Panda. So you can see what they're going for. Chopkick Panda, jeez. In a similar vein, we can see what the developers of Unearthed were going for when they developed and released Unearthed. And what they were going for was Uncharted. We thought it was the whole story. 2013's Unearthed, Trail of Ibn Battuta to give it its full name, is an action-adventure game that resembles Uncharted in the same way that a Wish prom dress resembles the dress in the photo when you ordered it online. Which is to say, it's a massive letdown that has pretty much all the recognisable parts of the thing it's trying to imitate, but each part is, in its own way, much worse. Like, for example, from Uncharted... Oh, no, 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 no! And now from Unearthed. No, 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 no! You said it. So did Nathan Drake, years earlier. Unearthed, Trail of Ibn Battuta, stars a poor man's Nathan Drake in the shape of Faris Jawad, a treasure-hunting explorer who shares Drake's habit for clambering around on ancient ruins. Hmm, I wonder where this creepy-looking corridor leads. Shooting people. And getting exploded. Oh. Faris and his sister Dania are on the trail of the famous Muslim Moroccan explorer Ibn Battuta, hence the name of the game, and though Faris's animations are ropier than a lasso shop, he does have a certain something that Nathan Drake never did. A remote control car. So that's something. With its unimpressive graphics and dodgy mechanics and all the unflattering comparisons to Naughty Dog's Uncharted, Unearthed fared extremely poorly in terms of critical and popular reception. This put paid to the prospects of a second episode of Unearthed, which had set out to be an episodic game. Episode 2, coming soon. Stay tuned at unearthedgame.com. Love that optimism. In case you haven't been on Twitch or YouTube or been called sus to your face in the last year or so, Social Deduction Game Among Us got pretty popular recently. This was thanks in part to its classic premise, adapted from old party games like Mafia and Werewolf, as well as its simple but diverting tasks, easy to learn map layout, and cute bean-like characters who could turn on each other and deliver brutal executions at the drop of a hat. I'm like, all right, yay, we let's all, all hang out. we all get on the same spot so that whoever in this room is the imposter can do a nice statue. <laughs> 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 All of which were elements shared by Pretend, a game that released two years after Among Us in November 2020 that at a casual glance, and I guess a formal white tie glance too, looks exactly like Among Us. There are minor differences. The action is set in an office now, rather than on a spaceship, and instead of being a shape-shifting alien, the killers are now rival software developers sent in to kill a group of indie devs and stop their software being released which seems a little on the nose. Imposters are now called pretenders, and some of the tasks are different, but in every other regard, pretend is a carbon copy of Among Us, from the walk cycles, to the map layout, to the colour schemes used, to the kill animations. Hey, at least the music in this trailer isn't from Among Us. No, it's actually from the Stanley Parable. These similarities did not go unnoticed by the Steam community, who absolutely roasted the game for cloning Among Us, and, to make things worse, the Steam reviews for the game are full of accusations of it being a secret Bitcoin miner that hijacks your PC to mine crypto in the background while you're playing. Which may or may not be true. Whichever way you look at it though, one thing is clear. This game is sus. Ha <laughs> ha
1993 Data East fighting game Fighters History is aptly named, because it turned out that Data East had been studying its fighting game history, arguably a little too closely. That's because Fighters History is obviously, transparently, a massive ripoff of one of the most famous and successful games of the early 90s, Street Fighter 2. It featured Hadouken-style fireballs, slow-motion knockouts, and fighters sassing their beaten-up foe after the fight. Or trying to, at least. Ray wins! Feel free to come around again. That sounds like a polite invitation to tea. Regardless, even in a world awash with games trying to cash in on the success of the 1v1 fighting game genre, Fighters History was clearly even closer in gameplay, moveset and art style to Street Fighter 2 than most. You might be wondering how they got away with this. The answer is, with the judges ruling, in a court of law. Yes, when Capcom got wind of just how similar Fighters History was to Street Fighter 2, it sued Data East, hoping to block further sale of the Fighters History arcade machine. Data East won the case, something that seemed to surprise even Data East's own lawyers, including Claude Stern, who said, I mean, the fact of the matter is, the Data East artists were copying Street Fighter. The ultimate work wasn't a slavish copy, a pixel-by-pixel -pixel copy, but they had evidence that we were copying things. Wow, with defence lawyers like that, who needs prosecution lawyers, am I right? The reason Data East won, in spite of more copying than a Xerox factory, was that a lot of the moves that had been lifted were punches and kicks, and because martial arts have existed for millennia, that's not really something Street Fighter could lay claim to. It was still a lucky escape though, with the judge specifically noting the similarity between Street Fighter character Chun-Li and Fighter's history character Fei Lin. That's not to say there were no elements of originality in Fighters history though. There was a weak spot system which encouraged you to target a specific location on your enemy and uh, this hopping nightmare clown. <laughs> clown wins! Uh, could you maybe copy Street Fighter a little bit more and get rid of that guy? Ugh. Let's go in here. We've got to find Lin. Okay, okay, let's go. This door won't open! You know the meme that goes like, Mom, can we have product X? And then Mom goes, no, we have product X at home. And then you go home and it turns out the product X at home is a disappointing imitation of product X. And then we all laugh at the properly formatted internet joke. Anyway, this is that, where product X is arcade rail shooter House of the Dead, as seen here. And the disappointing imitation you have at home is Konami's copycat, arcade rail shooter Evil Knight, as seen here. Evil Knight. Mom, why do we even have a working condition 1998 Evil Knight arcade cabinet at home? House of the Dead was a co-op light gun game in which you rescued a woman named Sophie from a mansion full of assorted zombies and zombie adjacent enemies. Sophie! Evil Knight was a co-op light gun game in which you rescued a woman named Liv from a mansion full of zombies and zombie adjacent enemies. Liv's over there! But where House of the Dead spawned a long-running high-profile series that eventually gave rise to a spin-off pinball game and, in the fulfilment of every franchise's fondest dream, a spin-off typing tutorial, Evil Knight, which came out two years later, received nary a sequel nor a console port because it was rubbish. This place stinks. I feel nauseated. Where are we? Somebody's still here. The voice acting in House of the Dead was never going to win any Academy Awards, at least not until they make a House of the Dead about how Hollywood is the real heroes, but the voice acting in Evil Knight achieved its own special kind of awkward. I think this place is some kind of ruin. I know. As per the meme format, where Evil Knight is the obviously familiar but disappointingly lesser version of what you actually wanted, Evil Knight rolled you around a mansion stacked to the rafters with dudes clearly dressed in skeleton costumes and budget-looking monsters that lunged at you with chainsaws, hedge clippers, and I guess a weed whacker. The one thing Evil Knight had going for it over House of the Dead was how you could play it with three people instead of two, and one of those people got to use a shotgun. Yet Evil Knight still faded into full and deserved obscurity, not least because the actual arcade hardware you played it on was so notoriously prone to failure that Evil Knight machines were gradually taken out of service the world over. 
Except at my parents' house, it seems. No, Mom, it's not just as good as the other zombie house game. Lib, oh, I'm so Thank glad you. you're okay. Who are those guys anyway? The Great Gianna Sisters is what you would get if you shook Shigeru Miyamoto awake at 3 in the morning and told him he had 45 seconds to exactly recreate Super Mario Bros. This 1987 Commodore 64 game sees you playing as a girl called Gianna, or her sister, uh, Maria, with an A, who have to travel through a nightmare world, presumably conjured after eating a whole block of cheese, after playing Mario on the NES. As you can see from this footage, the game is basically exactly the same as Super Mario Bros., only with all the sprites changed to be considerably less interesting and charming. It's even clearer if you place both games' first levels side by side, where it becomes quickly apparent that they barely even changed the layout. The similarities didn't go unnoticed, and Gianna sisters soon started to disappear from shop shelves. Sources disagree on the reason behind this, some saying that Nintendo sued the developers, others that Nintendo started pressuring retailers to stop selling the copycat game. Whatever it was, the upshot was that this was pretty much the last we saw of the Gianna sisters until 2009's Gianna sisters DS and 2012's surprisingly well-received Gianna sisters Twisted Dream both of which were much more their own thing. Still, one area in which the original Gianna Sisters does have Mario Brothers beat is in the box art. It's not even close. If you're going to shamelessly rip off one of the most successful games of all time, you could attempt to subtly repackage it. Or you could just literally swap a couple of letters in the title. Allow me to introduce ultra-violent first-person shooter starring a space marine, Gloom. Did he mean to say Doom? No. No, I did not. Oh. Back in the mid-90s, PC gamers were being whipped into a frenzy by Doom, which revolutionised the first-person genre with its fast-paced and gory gunplay in a horror-tinged sci-fi setting. If you were stuck with a much less powerful Amiga home computer, though, what you got was Gloom was exactly the same thing, but worse by every conceivable metric. Even the name Gloom was misleading. It wasn't difficult to see because it was dark. It was difficult to see because the resolution was <laughs> Between the postage stamp sized screen and the fist sized pixels, it was pretty difficult to work out what the hell was going on in Gloom. But one thing is clear, those health pickups are definitely baby bottles. So it's not just the game that sucks. One thing was clear, the game was desperate to be as violent and controversial as its inspiration. That's why it had the option of the messy violence mode, which left chunks of enemies strewn around the level, with a ruinous effect on the game's frame rate. Still, with maps this repetitive, at least you could tell where you'd been. Gloom was bad, but because Amiga owners were so starved of first-person shooters and envious of their Doom-playing PC brethren, it racked up huge review scores in magazines of the time. It even spawned an upgraded version, Gloom Deluxe, which actually added a visible gun to the screen, and then confusingly, Gloom 3, which was even worse than the first game, and turned that gun into, I want to say a burnt hot dog? Based on all the body parts lying around, it's probably best not to ask where the meat came from either. Speaking of Naughty Dog, which I was, right at the start of this video, it wasn't always Uncharted's and Lasts of Us for this prestigious development studio. Before that, before even your Crash's Bandicoot, way back in the 1990s when fighting games were on the up and up, Naughty Dog went to market with a cheeky copycat of its own. That look-alike fighting game from Naughty Dog was 1994's Way of the Warrior for the Panasonic 3DO home console. Pardon me, for I tell a tale known to precious few, and extend a challenge to compete with the greatest warriors the world has ever known. You don't need me to tell you that Way of the Warrior here bears more than a passing resemblance to the original Mortal Kombat. Unless you've never laid eyes on the original Mortal Kombat, in which case brace yourself for the most violent thing anyone had ever seen in a video game in 1992. In Way of the Warrior, digitised fighters battled opponents from around the world to win a spot in the Book of Warriors. 
You hope that also came with a cash prize because on their way to the Book of Warriors, these combatants risked being skewered to death on a big stick by a man named Shaky Jake. Put him away. <laughs> ah, shish kebab. Shaky Jake wins. Yes, somehow Way of the Warriors characters like Stick Having Shaky Jake, Muscle Bro Major Gaines, and The Ninja didn't make the same indelible impression on gaming history as Mortal Kombat, Sub-Zero, and Sonya Blade, even if they did have gruesome fatality-like finishing moves of their own. Shocking. No amount of snapping a dude in half over your knee could mitigate the otherwise unsatisfying brawling of Way of the Warrior. I know, hard to believe. Much nice try, Way of the Warrior, but in the words of off-brand Liu Kang, no sequel for you. Fight. No <laughs> sequel for you. Just as well, because ditching Way of the Warrior cleared the Naughty Dog decks to make and launch Crash Bandicoot just two years later, beginning a long and fruitful period for the studio that lasts to this day, with no further snapping dudes in half over your knee. I mean, I assume I haven't played all the Crash's Bandicoot. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about copycat games that we can't believe got made in the first place. But if you want to see some copycats of this video, I, I guess they're not really copycats because we, made, we, we made them, yeah, before this. So in a way, this is the copycat. This, oh, oh my god. Anyway, here's here's one video that you can watch. And down here is one from Outside Extra. They started after us, Outside Extra, so technically, they're the, copy they're the copycats. So go over there and tell them that. They'll love that. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time.